Hello everyone and welcome to the video lecture on OOMD class modeling. At the end of this session, students will be able to analyze object-oriented requirements, describe models of object-oriented technique and followed by understanding the class modeling. So, we will be discussing about the various models of object-oriented analysis and then concluding our session with the steps required for performing the analysis and design. So now let us understand the object-oriented analysis is the requirement phase of the object-oriented software development. So we can think of it as an alternative semi-formal technique. So in the semi-formal technique, basically we all are aware with the familiar tools like the ER diagram, the finite state machine, the data flow diagram. So basically the steps and the diagrams are typically performed in parallel after the initial class definition and these step focus on the data, action and the relationship. So the object oriented analysis includes the class modeling, dynamic modeling and the functional modeling. Moving ahead, the analysis phase builds a real world model from the requirements. Now, how are these requirements gathered? So the requirements are gathered by the real world experiences that are collected in the form of use cases and simple other notations to the requirements understood by the domain knowledge experts and when it's to be done for a client, these are gathered or the requirements come up from the clients through the client interview process. So the object oriented analysis model addresses three aspects of the system that is the class structure and the relationship, sequencing of interaction and the events, data transformation and computation. So primarily it tries to understand what the object does what it interacts and in what order. So the models of object and oriented analysis can be class model, dynamic model and the functional model. So when we talk about the class model, it's basically the data oriented aspect of the modeling. When we talk about dynamic modeling, it's the action oriented, that is the behavioral aspects. And when we talk about the functional model, it includes both the data and the action. So now let us begin with the class modeling. So class model is primarily the static structure. It is concerned with what objects are in the system. How are they related? When we move to the dynamic model, we focus on the action oriented aspects the behavioral aspects, we understand what events occur in the system, when do they occur and in what order. When we go to the third aspect that is the functional modeling, we consider both actions and the data and that is together through the data transformation. So we then answer the question, what does the system do? So basically, the OO analysis and design steps consists of the class modeling, dynamic modeling, functional modeling, and then add operations to the class model. After you are done with this, you iterate and refine the model. That is, after the first iteration, steps may occur in parallel or out of order. All models must be kept in synchronization as changes are made. So the first step is to go and create a class model, then follow the dynamic model, and then the functional model. So iterate and refine the model till you incorporate the changes as per the requirement specification. Now let us try to understand the first modeling. Now what is exactly a class modeling means? Now in the previous slide we have discussed here that we are expected to do the class modeling, then we are expected to do the dynamic modeling, then we are expected to do the functional modeling. But what exactly is class modeling? So when we talk about class modeling, the first thing as the name suggests, classes, identify the objects and the classes. Now how do you identify the classes and the object? You start identifying the classes and the object by preparing a data dictionary. Now what is this data dictionary? Data dictionary is basically the objects, the people, the things that 
define the system or that are present in the problem description. So prepare a data dictionary from the given problem statement. Now in the successive video that we will be covering, we will be considering an example. So at that time you will come to understand what is actually preparing a data dictionary. So I just again repeat the steps. So first thing is that you have to prepare a data dictionary and the reason for preparing a data dictionary is you have to identify the objects and the classes. So once you identify the objects and the classes, the second step is to identify the association between the objects. Now how do you, uh, what are associations, how are objects associated, what are the graphical notations, we will be discussing in the upcoming video lecture. But now you have to understand that once you prepare the data dictionary you have to associate the objects that you have identified after you identify the objects then you have to identify what are the class attributes and what are the initial set of operations that you are going to consider or that have been told to consider while designing developing the system so once you identify now what are class attributes we will do immediately in the next lecture uh, that's the slide so once you identify the operations and the attributes you then have to organize the object classes using inheritance now how do you do this now let us try to understand this terminologies means attributes and operations so what exactly is an attribute so attributes define the properties of the object every instance of the class has the same attributes okay it's actually the properties an attribute has a data type the values of the attributes may differ among instances now operations now what are operations operations define the behavior of objects actions performed on or by an object are basically the operations now they are available for all instances of the class and they need not be unique among the classes now you can see over here the example of a class is ball the attribute is radius and weight and the operation is catch and throw similarly for football you have air pressure the operation is pass kick handoff for baseball it's liveliness hit pitch and tag are the operations now i hope you have understood the meaning of attributes now let us see how you model this what is a graphical notation for representing a class and an object so basically the class are represented as rectangles and the class name is at the top followed you can see here this is the graphical notation for the class and uh, here it is represented as a rectangle the class name is at the top followed by attribute instances and the methods so depending on the context some information can be hidden such as the types or method arguments now here the notation for the objects is represented as the rounded rectangle the object name is its class name surrounded by parenthesis you can see over here so when you are describing the object it's rounded rectangle and instance variables can be can display the values that they have been assigned like over here you can see the instance variable it's actually the attribute you can type the value over here so this is the notation for the object diagram and the class diagram okay now you see here the object modeling notation for the class and this is the instance so this was uh, you can one way having three partitions and then this is with two just you have the class name and the attributes now moving ahead so this is an example of a class person with name age weight as the attributes and here this is the instance of the class and you can see here the person the name is Joe Smith, age is 39, weight is 158. So this is an instance of the object. Okay. Now, after understanding this, uh, let us try to uh, pause the video for some time and uh, solve some questions. So identify the incorrect uh, statements. So classes are represented as rectangles. The class name is at the top followed by attributes, instance and methods. So depending on the context, some information can be hidden such as types or arguments. So which of the answer is correct? So it's basically uh, A and B, the right answer. Attributes define the properties of the object. So is it true or false? The answer is true. So these are some of the references that have been used for this video making. Thank you for your patient listening. Thank you one and all.